Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill, and joining me today is Alicia Nunez, vegan chef and artist. Today we are talking about her journey to veganism, art, and cooking. So Alicia, tell us about how you became vegan. Gosh, so starting my vegan journey, it was, I didn't even know vegan was a thing. Uh, honestly, it was, I was in college and I had two classmates that I would study with these two like bigger guys. They were very muscular and they were both vegetarian. Oh, good. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and That's here good. I am. I was like, uh, we were studying together and I thought like, okay, I want to do this as a challenge just to see if I can do it, if I can be vegetarian because I did grow up eating meat and Mexican cooking, there's a lot of meat. Um, now, now there is. Um, yeah. And so for me, it was more of a challenge really to see if I could actually do it. Um, and the first time that I tried it, I didn't do very well because I was, it was in the middle of like our finals and I didn't really have time to like prepare food for myself or to feed myself enough. And so I went back to eating, um, I ate chicken. I think my friend's mom gave me chicken and so I ate that. And then my birthday came around and I thought, okay, I'm ready to give it another try. And by that time I was, I had already, my friend who was the vegetarian showed me a lot of vegan videos or like <laughs> things that go on in uh, slaughterhouses and dairy farms, all of that. And once he introduced me to that, I knew that I like didn't really want to participate in adding on to that type of suffering. And so once my birthday came around, I hosted um, just a small potluck with some friends and I told them vegetarian. Uh, but at that point, I wasn't really eating anything that was like I wasn't really eating a lot of eggs or cheese or anything like that. And so from my birthday on, I actually went cold turkey and just cut everything out. And um, it's been about nine years now since, wow, since then. So <laughs> it's been a good, good amount of time. So with your friends that were the meaty guys, you know, that you wouldn't think were vegetarian when you looked at them, why did they become vegetarian? I'm curious. One of them was more religious. Um, from his religious background, he um, already didn't eat pork. And I think just naturally didn't really uh, want to eat any other meats. Um, and then the one that was like more of my friend, um, he was, he had already gone into like finding out like all this, he showed, he's the one that showed me like Earthlings, all the, all the movies. And for him, it was like, he doesn't want to create more suffering as well. So he's, big on animal rights and just mm -hmm. I guess like more like peaceful living and uh yeah yeah so for him it was really about the animals and right. that was the beginning for me yeah and so you are originally from Mexico correct right mm -hmm. and then um you were saying before that you had grown up cooking with your grandmother can you tell yeah. us about that yeah, so I remember we lived in a small village and you know, there's no electricity. Um, we had like a clay oven where with a comal on top. So that's where we would cook the tortillas. And I remember I even now have a, like a grinder that mm -hmm. you like put it on the thing and it has the, I forget the handle that like grinds the corn and it comes out as masa. Mm -hmm. So I remember watching her do that as a kid and then watching her care like beautifully just lay the tortillas on the comal and wow. she did everything like she wasn't using you know here like sometimes we, we get scared to get burned or to like the, you know that's too yeah. hot but she's yeah. just doing it so easily so gracefully mm -hmm. and um she taught me how to make tortillas and i remember as a like as a kid that's like the only memory that i have of cooking with her just i knew how to make tortillas and i could make them <laughs> really good Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah and then later when I came to the U.S. I didn't really cook too much um, until I became vegan when I was like okay I want to make sure that I can keep up this lifestyle so I want to learn how to cook more things than just like one or two dishes and so it wasn't until I became vegan that I really started exploring cooking in a deeper way 
And um, I thought, why not veganize all the items that I grew up eating, all the yeah. all the dishes that I ate growing up. So yeah, that was a, it really sparked a, a passion for me to like really get creative, experiment, try new things. And I really enjoyed just like putting the dish together, making it beautiful, making it presentable. And I had my family try the, the food that I made. And mm -hmm. luckily it was them and not anyone else because I was still learning. Uh -huh. So there was a lot of things that didn't taste great. <laughs> but as time went on, I, I picked up a few skills and mm -hmm. learned how to play with ingredients a little bit more. And nice. now I can confidently say that I'm, a, I'm an excellent cook. <laughs> <laughs> can you show us some of the pictures, Eric, of um, her, her food? So what is this? This right here, so this is a red chile um, pozole, and it's got hominy, so the corn, the the bigger corn. Oh, I and like that I yeah, yeah. Instead of instead of chicken, I use a jackfruit, a jackfruit oh, in there, nice. and then just topped off with a little cabbage, some radishes, cilantro, and a little lime, and it's a perfect stew. Mm -hmm. Typically, you have it on the weekends. People have it after they've had their nights of partying. You know, in the mm -hmm. morning they go and have their bowl of pozole. Um, so yeah, it's it's a favorite for sure. Mm -hmm. And oh, here we go. This one is um. So this is a spinach masa. So I was watching Chef Stable actually when I was doing this when I started this Who's project. Chef Stable? Am I ignorant or? Chef Steve was a show on Netflix where they do uh, they have all these like well-known chefs and they show really get to know their story mm -hmm. and they're at the restaurants and putting all these like beautiful dishes together they're using the tongs to like place oh, a flower yeah. petal on there yeah, I know and that. I was so inspired and I think that really sparked my interest in like making food beautiful because when I look at it for me it's like it's such a work of art and it's beautiful. I, I would look at this and I'm like, I don't even want to eat it. I don't even want to <laughs> touch it because it's so, so nice. So I just got, I started getting really creative in, in that mm -hmm. sense. And it, yeah, yeah, I really loved it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just spinach masa that, um, but it has like radishes on top and right. uh, sprouts and uh, is that cashew cream or what is that? It, it's a cashew cream and underneath that there's actually uh, refried beans. So oh, it's a nice. sope. And that's really, normally they have, the sopes are round and they have um, the beans spread on there and then you put the toppings. It can be anything like cabbage, but I went ahead and uh, used the microgreens and radishes mm -hmm. and then the sour cream. Nice, nice. Yeah. And then this oh. one right here, this one is um, a jackfruit uh, in moladas. So traditionally you, you would think enchiladas, right? Mm -hmm. But with this one, what we do is we puree the beans. So these are black beans pureed and they have a little bit of spices, not, not, not too strong. They're pretty uh, simple. I really love simple foods. Yeah. And so um, it's the bean puree on top and at the bottom. And then we've got the sour cream again with the um, with the radishes and the jackfruit filling oh that looks yeah. delicious <laughs> yeah i gotta make those again <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh okay so these these are the chile rellenos mm -hmm. um and this one i put in with a vegan cheese and uh a um, zucchini saute with a little bit of onions, garlic. Um, I love cumin, so I use a little bit of cumin in there as well. And then the puree at the bottom is a like a beet puree, just very light broth of mm -hmm. beet. And I really just added that for the color because again, I was yeah. like so into the presentation yeah. and I just wanted it to look beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that spicy? It's pretty you spicy. Know, they can, they can get a little bit spicy if you leave mm -hmm. more seeds in there in uh, the in the chile yes. but if you take out the seeds most of the spice uh goes away and traditionally they're not really that spicy anyway the mm -hmm. poblano peppers are not not really very spicy mm -hmm. yeah so you can totally have some of that one <laughs> <laughs> uh these are pretty pretty simple just a potato flautas um, so it's just mashed potato inside. Um, you roll them up, fry them, and um, 
I just splashed a little bit of that sour cream again mm -hmm. on the plate for, for the presentation. But normally we have those, um, like I remember growing up eating them, at least four of them on the plate and um, a cabbage salad on top. And then mm -hmm. you put salsa. So usually like a tomato salsa. And then uh, growing up, we did a like a cheese. But mm -hmm. as vegan now, you can make like a vegan like Parmesan and just sprinkle that on top. Mm -hmm. and and it's good and, and then a sour cream if you if you want as well nice yeah. so um what was i gonna say uh do you feel like your love for art has really it seems like it's really influencing the kind of food that you make can you tell us more about how you got into the art scene and what kind of mediums you like to use sure yeah um well i do love videography a lot and photography as you can tell these photos i was really getting into it yeah um yeah so i think for me it's just about like i don't know if i like i want to be able to share something that i'm creating something that's beautiful mm -hmm. and um yeah with with the videography i've been playing around with it a little bit more just kind of putting together recipe videos now I haven't really shared too many of them online, but I'm planning on setting up, I've been working on my website for a little bit now, and uh, I wanna start a YouTube channel where I can just share the recipes. Yeah, um, that way I, can... I would definitely subscribe. I'd love to learn how to cook, you know, good Mexican food. It's hard to find yeah. good Mexican food here. <laughs> Besides <laughs> yours, it's like, you know, it's not like California here. So. Right. That's yeah. one thing I learned that like, it's hard to find good Mexican food here in yeah. Hawaii. And so um, I actually was teaching cooking classes at the beginning of the pandemic. Oh. So once everything went into lockdown, I was like, okay, how can I keep sharing my food? How can I give myself something to do? Because now, you know, we're just stuck at home. And so I started teaching cooking classes and every week we would do a different recipe. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that kind of for me it satisfied my love for sharing for yeah. community for art mm -hmm. and yeah just like helping people so when you like see these photos of the food that i'm creating mm -hmm. it can look a little bit like oh that's a lot of work or it looks a little yeah. intimidating but as we go through the process step by step it's really it starts to turn into a lot of fun where you can just kind of like play and like see kind of like bring out that creativity in yourself as well um yeah, and I think I was sharing a little bit before with you that one one way that I incorporate my art in along with my cooking is I would draw the ingredients first. So just like draw turmeric, draw the ginger, thyme, and then write the recipe down next to it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's really I think just cooking itself is an art, and it's it is. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So do, do you um still offer those cooking classes? You know, I stopped a little while ago, but right now I'm kind of in a transition period in my life and I'm considering restarting them. Yeah. I do have uh, plans again with the the blog and the YouTube for the for the recipes, but I've also been playing with the idea of starting to host um pop-ups kind of like so in California. Yeah, that would be great. In California, before I came here, I was hosting a dinner, like a dinner party mm -hmm. um, at, at a location. So everyone would buy their tickets and they'd come and I would host like a three, four course meal uh, yeah. with drinks and dessert included. And mm -hmm. it was really a lot of fun and it, mm -hmm. people loved it. So I've been kind of playing with the idea of maybe starting that here again and yeah, then seeing, seeing where that goes. Where yeah. would you have the pop up? Well, I'm not sure what the laws are here for for like a dinner party, but I was thinking, so right now I'm in my living room, but I was thinking I'm gonna turn in my living room into a dining room and I want to have a long dining table so it can be that sense of community. Yeah. Um, and if that, it's either between that or set, setting up a couple of different tables around mm -hmm. and then setting that up just to, just to test it out and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, just keeping it super more casual at home. Like, a, think of like going to a dinner party. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of places like that now. I mean, I, 
I'm sure, I don't know what the laws are like here. I haven't seen that many pop-ups here, but I don't see, I mean, they are loosening COVID restrictions and everything. So I think right. it's a possibility for you. I'm not sure right. where to do the I think how to do it. I think there was, they were giving out permits in the past so that because a lot of places weren't able to serve food in certain places. And so, or like food vendors couldn't be out. And so they gave a lot of permits where you can do that from home. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. And then how did you end up starting Tamales Oahu? Tamales Oahu, gosh. You know, it's um, that was it's so interesting because I had never planned on on making tamales and, and starting tamales Oahu, but as Christmas started coming around, um, friends would message me and ask me, hey, are you making tamales? <laughs> and I think there's a vegan Oahu page on Facebook. Yes. And everyone's wondering, like, where can we get vegan tamales? And yes, so it's very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I had a few different friends message me multiple times asking me if I was going to make them. And so one year I decided to just, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it just because people are wanting tamales and I'm just going to do it this one time. And then, and then just to satisfy, because I know in the holidays, everybody mm -hmm. craves that and wants that. Yeah. And so I remember I was, um, I did it. I just put up the ad and I was like, okay, I'm going to make some. And then I had a, I think I had a limit of how many people could get just to make sure that everybody could get some. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, it just kind of kept growing and growing. And now it's it's been more of a regular thing. I want to make it more consistent for sure. Um, because I know there's people that are always asking me, okay, when is the next so one? Convenient. When is the next one? I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's really great to be able to offer that at least like at least for the holidays. And then just throughout, you know, I think once a month or twice a month is a good good balance for me right now with yeah. what I've got going on but yeah so it just really started from that that need of having them for the holidays yeah yeah How about, uh, catering do you do any catering or anything um I did a little bit of catering I haven't done too much um I also had um I recently actually just left my my other job as a caregiver so oh. I was balancing cooking and caregiving and that can get a little bit heavy and yes, it requires a little bit of energy. So, mm -hmm. and I also just love surfing and like all my other hobbies. So I'm like, yeah. where do I find the time for everything? Uh -huh. Yeah, but maybe maybe once I start doing the dinners or brunches, um, I could probably maybe pick up some catering um, yeah. in, in, the, in the mix there. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you, um, how did you make it? I mean, how did you decide, I'm assuming, you went from Mexico to California first? Like, how did your family end up going to California from Mexico? Right. Um, so I, so those, the, the town that I lived in in Mexico, it's this very, very small. It's really like village. There's no electricity, like I mentioned, no running water. Oh, wow. That's how it was where, where I, when I was there. Mm -hmm. So I was there until I was about 10 years old. And um, yeah, very, very village life. We were running around no shoes. Um, and then, uh, unfortunately, my father passed away when I was five years old. Uh -huh. And so um, my mom was a single mother of five kids. And, and oh, living wow. in, in that small village, there's not much work to do. Like, there's not much work to be able to support a family, especially yeah. on your own. And so she came to California to just work and be able to kind of, because it can get a little bit, it was at that time, it was a little bit dangerous where we were living too. Yes, and yes. my father was actually murdered. And Ooh. so my mom wanted to get us away from that environment and just making yeah. sure that we were going to be safe and, you know, had food and a roof over our heads. And so she made the brave journey to come to California and eventually brought us over. Um, and we went to San Francisco, or the Bay Area in, in California. Mm -hmm. So Northern California, whereas like most people from our, our town lived in Southern California. So she, I don't know if she did it on purpose to get us to a, uh, just further away from them. Yeah. But I really, I so from 10 up until, I guess maybe 18, 19, I was in, 
the Bay Area I, mm -hmm. in, in California. And I really love, I loved it. Yeah. I still do, but mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> That's great. And then yeah. how did you end up deciding to come to Hawaii from San Francisco? Right. Um, so I came here, I came in 2017, really just for vacation um, with a boyfriend at the time. And we were thinking like, oh, maybe we'll move there. But by the time we came here, we had already broken up. So we came just as friends. Sure. And yeah, and I, I just fell in love. I fell in love with the place. I was welcomed with so much aloha. Everyone that I met was just so kind and so lovely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's really interesting because even though I grew up in California most of my life, I think maybe since leaving Mexico, I never really felt fully at home. And when I came here, I don't know if it was like just the energy or the everyone that I met that I really got that sense of like being at home, feeling, feeling welcome, feeling home. Yeah. And yeah, so it was really interesting to notice that even though I grew up in California most of my life, I never really felt at home until I came here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, California, it is a really big place. I used to live in California too. And it's definitely, it doesn't have that small town feel that you get here and you kind of know everybody, especially in the vegan community. Right. I feel like, you know, I know so many people in the vegan community and it's like a little family really. So it's quite nice, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So tell us um, about what, tell us about your new project, the YouTube channel and the recipes you're gonna do. Um, like when is that gonna come into fruition i guess <laughs> I'm wondering. i know you have a lot of projects but you know yeah yeah so i'm hoping i hope in the next couple months i can just have the website ready because mm -hmm. i i already have so many recipes that i have collected over the years uh -huh. and um i have some that i've recorded i, I haven't shared any yet but i really want to get into I, I, I have a lot of very creative recipes, but I want to get into more simple cooking and more clean yes. cooking. Um, I think that we can easily get lost in the fact that like, oh, just because it's vegan, it's healthy. But that's not necessarily true because yes. you can be vegan and be eating a lot of junk food, a lot of fried foods. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people go vegan for different reasons, maybe for their health, for the planet, for the animals. Um, for me, it was, it started with the animals and the environment and then later my health, uh, that was the third reason for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now I'm realizing like, okay, I want to be able to share recipes where it's going to help people heal. Um, it's going to help promote their health. Um, and yeah, so I want to focus on a lot of more simple cooking and simple recipes. Mm -hmm. Uh, still want to share a lot of like my home hometown recipes as well uh, and then explore different um different uh cuisine but i want to i want to stay focused on and, and the blog too i really want to emphasize about like you know eating more greens like mm -hmm. even if you're not even if people aren't vegan like include more greens in your diet and naturally you start to shift you start to feel better you start to shift your diet and you'll be craving more of the cleaner foods um, so I really want to focus on that, um, both, both my blog and the, and the YouTube channel as well. And I'd also like to get into more sustainable living, maybe reducing plastic. So yeah, that's wonderful. I mean, really, I was, you know, I, I was listening to the audiobook book um, from Michael Greger, How Not to Diet. And then he was talking about, again, all the obesogens that they have and all these plastic problems like phthalates, which we don't get as many because we're vegan. But, uh, you know, um, BPA still like a lot of people right. are using plastic bottles. Maybe they buy coconut water. I mean, I used to buy a ton of coconut water in plastic bottles. And you don't realize that you are actually consuming toxic chemicals that right. you know, make you obese and have, you know, other side effects like estrogens, everything. So um, yeah, that was, a. she's, she's amazing, Suzanne Frazier. She said, you know, she's done a lot of research and it's really helpful to know about that because most people don't know, you know? Right. So. I was really shocked at the fact that we're eating a, um, like a credit card worth of plastic a week. Was that the, is, is that right? Or is it a month? I think I, I'm not really sure. 
it was yeah. like there's microplastics in yeah. in everything and now everything. Yes. that like we're eating up to a, a credit card worth of plastic a week yeah. without knowing it yeah and that, that was you know, really a shocker yeah. for me yeah no it's ridiculous things that you don't even know have plastic like you know um cans because people use right. cans they're convenient to you know for beans or whatever you're trying to eat healthy you're eating beans but they're lined with plastic you know mm-hmm. and the little um packages of almond milk and whatever you know those are all lined. Right. everything is lined so i mean the only solution is to make everything yourself but it's hard you know it's hard, it's hard. yeah and so that's why I feel like you you know <laughs> yeah i really want to help like i really want to inspire people to cook more at home to yeah make more like all the nut milks you can make them so easily with oh, a yeah. with a blender you know it's, it's simple changes and it takes a little bit more time but it's worth it, like in the long run, it's worth for worth it for our health and our well being. Yeah. So I really, yeah, that's a really like a a focus for for me to just get people to get the get in the kitchen and experiment, try new things, and like eat as whole like whole foods as as many whole foods as possible, and try to steer away from the processed foods. Yeah. Um. I mean. One more thing I want to say um, before we close up. Um, so uh, for people who don't know, Alicia has a great Instagram website, Tamales Oahu. And, you know, I don't know if you're going to post any of your recipes there, but um, people should really check it out when she's uh, making tamales. They're delicious. I've had them many times. <laughs> mm-hmm. I highly recommend it. And, um, you know, but we're out of time and we're going to have to wrap it up now. So um, I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. Um, we've been talking to Alicia Nunez um, of Tamales Oahu, and um, she's been telling us about her cooking and artwork um, in cooking. And thanks to Eric, our broadcast engineer, and the rest of the crew at ThinkTech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you on August 19 for more of Healthy Planet on ThinkTech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. Our next show will be featuring Susie from Susie's Duck Sanctuary in Kailua. If you have ideas for the show, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at graceinhawaii.com for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.